it's Mac. Welcome to Holistic Health Talk. Hey, today I'm going to talk about going green. Yeah, going green. Uh, I want to give you all some information on household cleaners and how toxic things could be in your home. I've been on the road to going green way before they termed the coin green. You know, I used to always think about my environment, you know, being a a vegetarian, pescatarian, and vegan raw foodie, I, I always thought about the environment that I lived in and how I wanted it to, to be safe, you know, for me. So I, I have this air machine that I purchased. This was way back, I think, in the, the late 90s or early 2000s, something like that. But basically what it is is an ionizer. It emits ions in the air and that's basically air just like when you go up to the mountains you know in that good fresh clean air or after a, a fresh rainfall how good that air be then that's basically what emits in my home so I want to focus on the home and the household products in the home because about three or four years ago I decided to just take out and stop using all the harmful chemicals that were in my home that I was cleaning it with. And let me just give you some information on that. Examples of those products, a lot of them are listed as known carcinogens. Let me look at my notes here so I don't miss anything for y'all, okay? Now, aerosols, alcohol, ammonia, fluoride, formaldehyde, mineral oil, talc, and some fragrances all are listed as known carcinogens now some time ago i stopped using the colognes and fragrances like that and i changed over to using body oils now the body oils for me they are a lot safer for you to use than some of those colognes or perfumes and fragrances out there which most of them are loaded with chemicals now do you know what is toxic under your sink Let's talk about that. If you have products under your sink that are labeled with caution, then basically what that means, it can kill you with only two tablespoons or up to two cups. You know, everybody's body is different. Some people it may take more, you know, like a cup, cup and a half, whatever. And maybe some people, only two tablespoons could kill them. So, you may want to read those labels and start to weed out some of those if you really want to be green. Now, warning. If warning is on the back of the product, basically it can kill an adult with only one teaspoon of whatever that substance is. And then danger. Danger means it can kill with just a pinch of the substance. Just a pinch. Now tell me if that's not some highly toxic stuff that you have under your sink. Now another big area, and maybe some of y'all know about this, if you have carpet in your home, wow, that is a big one. Because I know where I'm at, I have wall-to-wall -wall carpet. And the only place the carpet is not is in the kitchen and the bathroom. Now they have different types of carpets out there now. But the synthetic ones, you probably really want to stay away from because they're made of nylon. And nylon carpets have over 40 chemicals. And many carpets emit VOCs and PFAs. Now VOCs is volatile organic compounds. And we're going to talk about that. And PFAs is this long word, y'all. I don't know. It's called perfluoro alkali substances, something like that. Basically, both of them are toxic substances. Now, VOCs, some of the chemicals in them are stuff like benzene, ethylene, glycol, formaldehyde, and I can go on and on. Now, PFAs, those are toxic substances that don't break down over time. So, they continually can be harmful for humans, animals, and even your pets. PFAs are linked to health problems, 
housing and environmental problems, things like cancer, immune disorders, growth, learning, uh, and behavioral problems in children. Now we know we have all this ADD and ADHD and stuff that you know a lot of children been uh, diagnosed with, but just think, could it be some of the chemicals that you have in your home? Because that's what PFAs do. PFAs are used commercially and at a lot of military bases where they have firefighting uh, substances like foam. And even in your kitchen, people that have the non-stick pans, those have PFAs in them also. And I think some time ago, I got rid of all of those different non-stick pans. I didn't have but a few, but I got rid of them because they chip out the while. And I knew just, you know, that wasn't safe. Having that chipped up pan in there still trying to cook in it. So I want to talk about some of the safer household products to use for those that are interested. So stay right there and I'm going to get right into my bathroom and show y'all some of the safe alternatives that I use. All right, y'all, let's get right into it. Now, this is the first of a series of videos I'm going to do on going green and using household cleaners and other products. So these are my go-to products that I made up that I use in my bathroom for my sink and tub specifically. All right, of course, we got the good old products that, you know, back in the day, your mom and your pop may have used, one which being the borax soap, 20 mule team borax soap. And of course, the good old handy Arm & Hammer baking soap. So you're gonna use one cup of baking soda, 15 drops of oregano essential oil, 15 drops of fine essential oil, Fifteen drops of rosemary essential oil, and then two tablespoons of the borax uh, or twenty meal team soap. Now you just take that, mix it all up in a bag. Get you one of those baggies or something that have a good uh, seal on it that you can close up, and then you just want to shake it all up. You know, shake that stuff all up. And what I do, I put it in a little container, something like this to make it easy, you know, and easy to store and don't take up a lot of space. I think I've used this, had pepper or some kind of spice in it, you know, and that way I don't use a lot. Because before I was just digging in the bag, sprinkling, and I think I was using too much probably. You don't need to use a lot. So, you know, get you a container. If you got to make more, just get a bigger container or something that you, you know, not using. So let's get right into it, y'all, and I'm going to scrub this sink. But let me just tell you first a little bit about the oils. Now, I use, we have all of these oils, of course, on my website at Max Herb Shop. And I'll have that uh, address running by there on the screen. Now, the oregano oil is the one that gives it the punch and power to get, you know, any stains and anything like that uh, cleaned up. So our oregano is wild oregano, and of course it's um, uniquely sourced where oregano uh, is grown best. So you can find it, like I said, even the uh, thyme. Sometimes I use now. You know I promote now products because they have a real reasonable price. And I can tell you on my website, you know, these essentials are moderately priced but you got a high quality product. Now, now, not as high a quality as the Nature Sunshine products, but you know, for the money that you pay for now, yeah, they work as well. So that's where I, I got my, my thyme from. And then the rosemary, I used uh, some other brand too. All right, let's get into cleaning this sink.
Now, I don't know if y'all can see that, but this thing actually has a shine to it. You know what I'm saying? It might not be as prominent, but the sink really has a shine. I don't know if I'm getting a good shot of that, but y'all may be able to see it has a shine to it. And it smells good too. It has a real good smell to it. All right, now my next product is for mold, mildew in your shower. It's a spray, mold and mildew shower spray. You just need a, a little container, something to hold about 16 ounces of uh, liquid. You just need uh, two cups of distilled white uh, vinegar, uh, one teaspoon of tea tree essential oil, uh, 20 drops of oregano essential oil, 10 drops of sweet orange essential oil, and you just put that all in the bottle and shake it up. Just shake it up and I spray it around the basin of my shower and the basin of the tub. This concoction is even better than some of the most powerful cleaners out there for mold. I know a lot of people like to use bleach and say, wow, yeah, bleach will kill it and clean it like anything. Right, but bleach will also kill, you know, and irritate your sinuses and your uh, nostrils and stuff. Now, I know y'all smell that strong stuff when you open that bottle of bleach. And also, you know, it's an irritant for the respiratory system. So you don't get this with the vinegar. Now, I know the bleach, you know, people um, really like it and believe in it, but if you want to go green and use something that's safe, especially for your septic tank, you know, all of these products I'm talking about are safe for your septic tank and also for your body, you know, something that's safe for your body, you know, for animals and your pets. We all want that. So this is the concoction. And another thing about it, you can spray this, you know, around your tub or wherever mold is. I don't have any mold, but you know, it's gonna grow in moist places, wherever it's damp. And I use it as a preventive because not only does this kill mold and, and, and prevent it, but it also goes beneath the surface. Say if you spray this on, you got caulking like, you know, around your tub or whatever, it goes beneath that. It can go beneath the caulking and prevent mold under there. Bleach cannot do that, okay? Bleach can't do that. So this is a very inexpensive way to go green and hey, get you the mold and mildew out of your bathroom. Well, hey, that's all I got today, folks. Thanks for stopping by Holistic Health Talk.